What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 371 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast. For hosts Sam Smith and Mark Allred, joined by special guest Amon McLean, discuss the latest rumors and reactions around Bruins coach Jim Montgomery. Well, Jim Montgomery, let's talk about it. His hot seat is heating up by the second, especially after this game and the Dallas game and the Ottawa game. Uh, I have to imagine that the clock is ticking for Montgomery, right? Let's talk about it, right? All the, all, all of the 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 line the, the lines being put in a, in a ninja blender. Okay, we've got um, uh, constantly changing the lines. We have uh, taking guys in and out of the lineup when they don't need to be. Johnson, you know, you have freaking like so you're not responding well, right? For example, we were just talking about this during the Dallas game. Ben hits Carlo. Gets knocked down to a minor from a major. No response out of Montgomery. He looks lifeless. Kind of like the whole team looks lifeless right now. Um, his hot seat is heating up, in my opinion. Um, Eamon, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on Montgomery, and do you think he'll be fired? Uh, well, to answer the last question, I think he will. Um, when, I'm not sure, but I just, I just don't see – him getting an extension at this point. Um, as for, like, his actual job performance, I'm not sure how much of it is really on him. Like, I think there's there's some stuff that I think the Bruins could definitely improve. Like, I think their defensive zone coverage is, like, I think someone can come in and fix a lot of that. Like, the Walker goal today, the Blue second goal, both Tufty and Kepke missed their guy. You know, that's that's fixable. That, that can be prevented. Um... I mean, a lot of the missed passes, I'm not really sure how a coach fixes that. But I do think – I'm not sure how much of the goal scoring is going to get improved if they bring in a different coach. Like, I'm not sure if the offense really increases. But I do think the defense could definitely improve. So that's part of the reason why I think they make the change. Um, yeah, I agree with you on the Dallas thing. Um, the line blender thing I think is really just uh, kind of going off what Mark said, the money ball scene. I think it's just – desperation you know you don't have job security you're just going to try a bunch of things and see if something happens really um and then um i had one thing i'm trying to think yeah i think that's it um that's all i really have oh uh, yeah yeah um, hey, hey. <laughs> mark uh yeah this whole this whole topic is is really hot right now um obviously you know you need a response out of your team and if the Bruins aren't going to trade somebody significant to to create that spark the next guy is you know you're 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 gonna fire your coach and I don't know it's just it's so yes I mean if it happens it happens but I I honestly think that a new coach won't come in immediately. I really think that they're going to hand the reins to um, a, a coach like uh, Joe Sacco and uh, basically keep it internal um, because here's my theory is <clears throat> Sacco comes in, obviously the special teams is crap right now. It's not looking good. So, you know, I know a lot of the fans out there are not like saying we need this guy, this is our savior or anything like that. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot to, to unpack from there. But, you know, just to say if a, a coach like Joel Quenville was available, all right, I don't think Joe would want to come in at this point because you're writing the same message from previous coaches, uh, Chris Kelly, uh, Sacco, and so on. Um, but I don't honestly think that that's going to change anything. I think if any change in, in the coach for a, a real good one or one that's been established is probably going to happen in the off season. And that coach is going to want his own staff. So from right now, moving forward, regardless of what happens with, with Monty's job, I think they're going to go internal. I think Joe Sacco is probably the next guy and say, listen, if you can get a response out of these players, then great. You're the intern moving forward. And then we'll reevaluate your extension later on. If you so shall deserve it. But if it doesn't happen and this conti and this continues to downward spiral and you you know you don't make the playoffs or you you make the playoffs and you're out in the first round, I can't see this Boston Bruins team staying with the same message that is going on 
and has been going on all season. So that's when I actually believe that the change uh, will be uh, during the off season for an, a new coach with a, you know, a, a kind of a new system and, um, and his own, his own people to, to, to help the following year. I have an interesting take here. Okay. Is it hot? How much, is it hot? Yeah. Cause I like the spicy hot takes, man. Okay. All right, here yeah, we go. Water this down. <clears throat> hot take. Montgomery isn't fully to blame for this. Sweeney is not fully to blame for this. The players. It's, it's the leadership core on this Ooh. team who have done absolutely nothing to try to get a spark within the room. I'm looking at you, Captain. I'm looking at you, assistant captains. I'm looking at Marshan. I'm looking at Pasternak. I'm looking at McAvoy. I'm looking at Swayman. I'm looking at Carlo and Coyle and Zaka. Those guys who have been around the block, who have been here for a little bit. I'm looking at you. I, I'm looking at both the Lindholms. Especially Hampus has been here for three years. This is his, what, his fourth season? Third and, fall? And... And his best freaking year, in my opinion, so far. Right. He's been the Bruins' best defenseman all season. And then, bam, you know, that's just freaking Bruins karma, that you have a good guy that's out there trying to, you know, change his career around, be what the Boston Bruins want to be as a shot-generated, you know, puck blue liner. <laughs> and and then he got injured. And, and, and it's not on him. It's not because he's soft or anything like that. It's just yeah. – that's just the, that's just karma for the season. Yeah, um, I'm I'm looking at the leadership core of this team who have done nothing, and I mean nothing, to try to spark something in the room. Yes, the coaching hasn't been great. No shit, Sherlock. The players haven't been great either. Um, we call Pasternak Mr. Turnover for a reason. He turns over the puck way too much. Either Marshan's there or he's not. McAvoy has probably had his worst season to date so far to start the year. Swayman has had his worst start of the year so far to, oh, to his geez. career. Yeah. Part, part of that's on the defense, but he has not been great. Uh, Coyle, Saka, so far in the first month, non existent. Coyle's got, they both got three goals for guys who are paying a combined $9 million to six total goals. Not going to cut it. All right. And Lindholm too. You know, if you're talking about big, yeah. cal uh, big, 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 big calories, big salaries and long-term, I mean, Lindholm's got to pick it up too. Um, I know he's new. Yeah. Two goals, seven assists, nine points in 19 games. For a guy who are paying all $8 million, that's not going to cut it. Eamon, what are your thoughts yeah. on that? I totally agree. I mean, I think a lot of the times with these coach firings, it kind of – like there's a saying that I hear a lot that you can't fire all the players, so you basically have to fire the coach. And that's pretty much what I think this is going to be, in all honesty. Because, I mean, it's hard to make a trade of significance at this point in the season, just given how salary caps work and all that stuff. Like, Majority of trades you see now are really just guys who aren't playing that are going to teams that have a ton of cap space. The Bruins can't really do like anything of significance, I feel like, at this point. Like they can't really just trade someone to shake up the room because they gotta find someone who like wants to trade for that player. It's just hard at this point in time. So I mean, it's kind of just the obvious thing at this point. There's not really any other option in terms of like if you just want to shake it up right now. So, yeah, I mean, they need to be so much better. Like, the, the leadership, like, there's, I mean, who's had a good year? Like, the Catholic, probably. Hampus Lindholm's had a good year. I mean, other than that, Kepke, I guess, features have not been bad. But, like, other than that, like, there's so many guys you can point to that need to be so much better. And, yeah, yeah that's, that's kind of what I see. I want to respond to this comment. Cut Marshan some slack. He had three surgeries this offseason. He's the team's second leading scorer. He has more heart than any other two Bruins combined. I respond with this. 
He had three surgeries this offseason. Yep. He said he was 100% healthy. He said he was 100% healthy. So he doesn't get that. He doesn't get that pass. I'm not talking about his production on the ice. The production's obviously been there. I'm not stupid. Okay. But in the locker room, you are the captain. You're supposed to be the voice of this team, and you're not doing it. I understand it's your second season as the captain. You are not being the captain by by yelling at your guys, getting him going. You, he has not done that. Oh. And, if he ha- and if he has done that, the product would show it on the ice. When Chara and Bergeron yelled, there was there was a reason, and it got them going. Marshan has done nothing as the as the captain to try to get this team woken up. These are pro athletes. I don't care. Yeah, these are pro athletes. You're supposed to take accountability as the pro athlete. That's why I'm upset. That's why I'm upset. Um, yeah. What was I going to say shit before that happened? Um, I think the 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 one game that I point out where I did see some leadership, and obviously I'm cherry picking this here because of the uh, the post game was the three to two overtime win against St. Louis in St. Louis. I think that third period uh, they really came out and, and and showed that they could guide this team to make a, a good solid comeback win. Was it overly celebrated? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of think so because. This isn't a consistent team that you know needs to celebrate like they just made the you know ALCS like in first round or whatever in baseball. Like so many people put the tarps up in the locker room because they made the playoffs and there's champagne freaking spraying everywhere. Um, we don't need to act like that. Act like that when you have consistent games and you can put a string of of, of point you know points together. Um, but th- like you said, th- the uh, the leadership and so on. There's no consistency in that either because I wanted to see the next game, how they responded after they came out in that third period in St. Louis. And there was nothing. Nothing. Right? Eamon, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, there's just such few consistencies in this team other than that they're consistently inconsistent, I guess. But, um, like, yeah, just – the Dallas game, how, I don't understand how you can lay that much of an egg. Like, Dallas is a great team. Don't get me wrong. They are they are legitimate cup contenders. They are, they are the cream of the crop, right? But they were just non-competitive. Like, it's, it's not it, – like, if you were a casual fan and, like, you don't, like, care as much about the Bruins as, like, probably us three do, like, you could have shut that game off in the second period and started playing, like, Fortnite or something. Like, you yeah. didn't have to watch the rest of it. It was over. Like – how many games have we seen that this year where the game's over in like the first 20 minutes that there's just no point in watching? Like we're just watching just to like see how bad of a loss it is. Like that's the thing that irritates me. It's just non-competitive. Like they're not, the games are over so early. Yeah, because we know they can't come back from it because it's a, they, they create themselves this much of a of a. Um, deficit to, to try to overcome and the way the team plays, you're not going to get, you know, like you're not going to get a, a big comeback out of that unless you're the blues game, which is a once in a blue moon. It was their first multi-goal comeback since the 65 win season, by the way, want to point that out first multi-goal comeback in the third period since the 20, 65 win season, two years ago. Hey, you know what? It was a little concerning for me. Now that I think of it, is it's the comments from Neely recently. I'm not sure because I, I wish I can give credit. I gotta start writing the shit down. But Neely said something about recently, and obviously we've heard it from Jim Montgomery several times in post game pressers. But um, their their unpreparedness during the uh, po- uh, the training season, uh, the preseason, and so on, and training camp um, was brought up several times and that that to me is a little concerning um and i do agree with that that the team just came right out of the gate not looking like like oh they started out of the gate like they were still in the preseason like i mentioned in an article that i i wrote um but then you know to have neely bring it up recently i was kind of like geez this is a, a it is a concerning issue yeah um Jim McBride of the Boston Globe did an interview with Cam Neely, and it came out uh, yesterday. Thank you very much. Yep, I just saw it. 
<clears throat> he says, let's take a look. I thought our training camp was a little disjointed. Quote from Cam Neely. Quote, some guys out at camp, whether it was injuries or whatnot. So I think it was a little bit more challenging than we had the last couple training camps. The work on special teams wasn't really something that the staff could do it in camp just because of the guys in and out. Yeah. That's, yeah. Why, it, that's why it sucks. There it is. They didn't work on it in the preseason. Yeah, not good. Um, you know, things got to get better sooner or later. This, I, I, I mean, I, I still have faith that this team can get it. I know there's new, there's new members to the team and so on. Everybody's got to adjust, but I mean, there are some things during the game that you, you can see that are positives, but there's a lot more negatives uh, this season and continually moving forward toward the Thanksgiving kind of like, you know, threshold when everybody kind of figures out where they're going to sit in the playoff position. And right now, it's scary, scary that I'm saying this again, that the Bruins are sitting in third place in the Atlantic. So they're technically in a playoff in a playoff spot. Like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week for episode 372 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast for real Sam Smith, Mark Garman, and David Collins discuss the latest rumors and reactions around Boston Bruins. See you then.